Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I'll be going over how you can make the best practice log for your Science Olympiad Write Stuff Plane. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions, feedback, or video ideas in the comments below, and please consider subscribing to the channel because I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So if you're competing in the Science Olympiad Write Stuff event, then you may notice that you have to have some sort of practice log that records and measures the different flights you have tested before you go to your competition. And the reason that this is so important beyond the extra points you get by having a practice log is because the practice logs allow you to analyze your results and then improve upon it. So in this video, we will be going over the different types of categories and measurements you should be taking when you fly each time your Science Olympiad Rice Cell plane, which will ultimately allow you to better understand your results and make improvements in the future. And also at the end of this video, I will be going over, or I will be giving you guys access to the practice log that will have all the different uh, measurements and different things that I discussed in this video. It will all be on one document that you can find, link in the description below. So for some general measurements that you should include in your right stuff practice log is obviously you should have the amount of time that your plane was flying. So we call that time aloft, which is just, again, the time that the plane was in the air for. But another thing you should be recording before each flight is the weight of your plane. And I find that this is something that may change depending on if your plane broke and you had to repair something or it was sitting and it gained humidity or something and it gained a little bit of weight or you did something else and it happened to gain a little bit of clay, a little bit of weight. I think it's just a good idea to make sure everything is consistent before each flight, so meaning that the weight is consistent each and every time. So I, th I think that's a good idea just to make sure you measure your plane and weigh at right before you fly because you never know, something may have broken or you may have added something accidentally and it may have hindered your flight and you may have gone off course. So good practice just to get the weight down. But uh, the third thing that I want to tell you guys about generally is the ceiling height, the maximum ceiling height that your plane went to. And the reason that this is so important is because it lets you understand if you're actually utilizing, excuse me, if you're actually utilizing the full height of the ceiling, meaning that you're getting the best possible time with your current settings. So if you're not using the total ceiling height, then you're missing out on a ton, and I mean a ton of time that you could be getting. So if you're not recording the ceiling height, I think it's one of the required sections in the rules, but regardless, you should be recording that to make sure you are utilizing the, but the most amount of height and getting the greatest amount of time. As you know, right stuff planes are flown from a rubber motor. And these rubber motors are come in many different shapes, sizes, thicknesses, and even different types of elasticities. So, but there are a couple of different things you should be recording and measuring because they do affect, affect they do affect your flight greatly. And those three things are the length of the rubber motor, the width of the rubber band, and the amount of torque you put on that rubber. And the reason that these three things are so important is because they determine the, the rate that your, uh, that your plane will climb upwards and ultimately the amount of height that your plane will reach. With a high amount of torque, your plane will just shoot straight up, but you don't want it to shoot straight up because if it does, then you're just stalling the entire time. You want to get a balance between going straight up and not going up at all. So like around a 45 degree angle and that will get you the best results. So you want to measure the length of the rubber band loop. And if you, and this is just generally, if you decrease this, the length of the rubber band loop, you'll have more torque. And if you increase the length, you have less torque, but you can put more turns on it. And if you have a thicker rubber, then you'll have more torque and a thinner rubber, you'll have less torque. But with a thinner rubber, you should be able to get more winder turns into that rubber motor. And 
finally you want to get you want to measure the torque and the best way to do this is with a torque meter but it's not necessarily required you could always go off the winder turns which you should be recording anyways but having a torque meter that you wind onto and that displays the amount of torque that before and before or during your winding and after you unwind it a little bit doing that and using a torque meter will definitely help you out in determining if your plane is climbing up in the best possible way now just for some other things that you should be recording regardless of whatever you are or are not recording is definitely the amount of winding turns you put in but i'm I think it's better if you don't use the actual winder turns because winders come in different types of ratios. Like you could have a 10 to one ratio or a 15 to one ratio winder, which means that every time you rotate the winder once, you'll put 15 winds on the rubber band. So I'd like to use the total number of winds on the rubber band instead of the winds on the winder. So if I'm winding 30 times on a 10 to one winder, then I'd record 300 on my winds because that is technically 300 winds on the rubber, even though it's just 10 winds or 30 winds on the 10 to 1 winder. And in addition to motor winds, you want to record the motor unwinds, which are when you wind your, you use your winder and you wind your initial turns, but then to reduce the amount of torque, you want to rotate or unwind it a little bit. So you want to unwind, you want to record the amount of unwinds you put just so you're able to be consistent with your torque. And then you should be recording the circle diameter of your plane, which is the diameter of the circle your plane travels in, which allows your plane to avoid walls. And you want to be able to adjust this, this aspect of your plane on the fly, because for every different venue, the uh, circle diameter needs to be different and needs to adapt so that it can be as big as possible without crashing into any of the other obstacles and having it as big as possible will get you the best results and finally the last thing you should be including in your right stuff practice log is the is a notes section where you analyze different things that you could have done or that you did do and what you can do to improve in the future and i th really think the notes section is by far the most important section even though it's not required by science olympiad rules that you need a note section but it is just that much more crucial to analyzing the results because sometimes they're just there's just not a quantity that you can put on how you launch something like you put it at a different angle or a different a different way you launch it in a different way you can't quantify that it's all about the details at that point and noticing what you did what you did and didn't do that worked or didn't work is essential to improving upon your plane and understanding how it works. If you want to learn more about this topic, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll take you to my website where I created a post about this exact topic, where you'll also find the PDF version of the, uh, of the practice log I made. But if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions, feedback, or comments in the comments below. Follow me on social media. My Instagram will be on the screen right now, or you can find my links in the description below. And please consider subscribing to the channel because I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I'll catch you guys next time. Stay in phase.